We live in a connected world where connectivity has become an integral part of our lives. It's something that many of us take for granted, but I want to find out more. What's the technology that drives modern communications? What does it mean for people in different countries? And what can we expect in the future? I'm Adrian Simpson and I'm on a journey around the globe to discover more about our connected world. The world of communications is absolutely crazy just how much has changed in 10 years. But like most people, I don't just use the phone for making calls and my laptop for sending emails. My connected world involves banking, emailing, socialising. They're incredible pieces of technology and I'd like to find out a bit more about them. For the first leg of my journey, I thought I'd start in the heart of Europe. Brussels. For some background on connectivity trends throughout Europe, I thought I'd take the opportunity to find out a bit more. The connectivity scorecards developed by Professor Waveman in partnership with Nokia Siemens Networks are a really useful way of charting my journey through the connected world. Throughout Europe, I've already discovered that energy efficiency is a big issue for operators. In the UK, T-Mobile are using flexi base stations that are radically reducing emissions and therefore lowering costs. And uptake of services is increasing rapidly too. In Sweden, leading triple play operator Comhem is already delivering its service packages to 45% of the population. All over Europe, convergence is a word I keep hearing a lot. Here in Belgium, I'm keen to see how they're embracing it. Belgium is a surprisingly moderate to poor performer. In Western Europe, it's a laggard. It's a laggard across the board. On the consumer side, where we see advanced infrastructure available, it's not, there's not a sufficient take up. On the business side, similar. There is not a use of ICT. There are not great skill development. And it probably comes back to the government. Government should be a leader demonstrating how important this is to them and to the rest of society. Despite Belgium's moderate scorecard rating, businesses are innovating in all kinds of ways. IPTV has been promising to revolutionise TV for some years now. I've come to Belgacom, the established quad play operator, to find out what the future holds. Delivered using a conventional broadband connection, IPTV has been a popular choice here in Belgium, where 98% of the population are connected and technical director of Belgacom TV shows me how the IPTV experience isn't just limited to your television. We have uh, live football for television. We create the highlights for the web and also the goal for the mobile. Belgacom's so-called three-screen strategy makes use of state-of-the-art hardware that means all this content can be accessed by the consumer whenever and wherever they want it. So everyone's talking about convergence, you're actually doing it, Francois. <laughs> no, no. I prefer that you said it than me. <laughs> no, 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 no. For the next part of my journey, I've decided to go by train. This Thales train is one of the first to provide a wireless connection on board that works even under tunnels. Our trains run at 300 kilometers an hour and we are crossing four borders, which shows immediately the complexity of the project. Thales is the first international high-speed operator that offers this service to its customers. So it's unique technology, the way you've combined all those three, those three networks? Yes, it is unique. We are the first in the world and we are very proud of that, of course. That's how you should be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This dome-shaped object is called the radom and this is the antenna which serves the bi-directional link between the train and the satellite. It's thanks to that unlikely looking hero that I can send and receive all my emails whilst I'm on the train. This is how it works. There are internet access points throughout the train. Those access points are then connected wirelessly to a central server. That central server then feeds to a bi-directional satellite. Now when you enter a tunnel, the connection swaps to a conventional network like UMTS for the duration of your passage through the tunnel. And this works across all devices, from laptops to mobile phones. OK, so let's see if it works. Go to the Thales page. There we are. Ah, we're in. Now seems like the perfect chance to do a bit of research on my next location, Finland. 
In the connectivity scorecard, Finland was surprisingly moderate, where we thought it would be a world leader, because it, the mobile phone basically began in Finland. Everything is there for it to be a world leader. There is infrastructure, the business skills, there's consumer-led growth, but government is kind of missing a strategy here. What we need is what we see in now in the UK and France, digital Finland. It needs that kind of strategy to bring it all together and become a world leader in innovation and ICT. I've come to Helsinki, the spiritual home of the mobile phone. Here I'm hoping to find out how one of the highest connectivity scoring countries is continuing to lead the way in the future of communications and how Finns themselves are taking advantage. But before I do that, I'm off to the Nokia Siemens Networks Experience Centre. Now that is a massive number. What does it exactly mean? It means that uh, the majority of the people in the world are already connected. That's more, more than 4 billion people today. And uh, our projection is that by 2015, 5 billion people are connected. Kai shows me through a series of mobile applications what's already possible today. This application is showing, uh, for example, what you can do when you have uh, uh, a device with embedded GPS. This evening planner application not only tells me where all my friends are, but also gives me recommendations of where to meet them. The future of these networks will enable even higher bandwidth, making the experience of the consumer much richer. Video clips and music can be shared with anyone across networks such as LTE. But what about the devices themselves? I was intrigued to see where it all began. Some time ago, wow. they were like this. This is a couple of decades old. Wow, look at that. This technology hasn't just been reduced in size. The environmental impact is a huge consideration too. So a typical base station like this consumes the equivalent amount of energy as uh, maybe 10 light bulbs. I'm beginning to understand now why Finland is helping redefine what it means to be connected. Now I found out that in downtown Helsinki, they've got a free Wi-Fi connection, so I can make the most of that. And I've also found out the name of one of the pioneers of text messaging, one Matty Mackinen. I oh, know, I'll send him a text message see what the ideas were behind it. So I have to say, free Wi-Fi is all right, but it's absolutely freezing. Matty, the man behind the text message, texts me back. He tells me that SMS started out as a business tool and never envisaged the cultural impact it would have. Operators like Sonora and Alyssa Finland are certainly providing some life-enhancing applications. For example, if you're leaving today to your summer cottage, you can set the heating system on through the mobile phone. But it doesn't end there. Finns are using their mobiles to access banking services, buy movie tickets, tram tickets, and even to pay for things at vending machines. But are people really making the most of these networks, applications and devices? Some young people I met were gaming online, downloading music and even using GPS. However, most people were only really using their phones for calls and text messaging. I've learned that the telecoms industry has succeeded in innovating tremendous technological capabilities. What's interesting though, is that even here in Finland, a vast majority of features go unused by most customers. We're not always inclined to do new things by the arrival of new technology alone. Hi, can you take me to the airport please? Yes, of course. So who will you be texting this evening when you finish work? To my girlfriend, to ask what food she's making to me. Really? Yeah. Thomas, it's 2009. You don't, you don't do that kind of thing anymore. What is it going to be, reindeer? I love this country. I can even check in using my mobile. Here in Helsinki, I've witnessed that vast improvements in network and mobile technology are paving the way for an always connected society.